remote dictionary server yes this is what redis means so if you take two letters of each and every word r e d i n s then it makes as uh, redis okay so what is redis redis basically is an open source bsd license in memory data structure store and by data structure store it means that it makes use of various data structure to store the data okay and it is widely used as uh, databases caching mechanism then as a message broker and there are multiple other use cases as well like it can be used as lru cache and other uh, aspects but the most important and most common use cases are like caching rate limiting message broker and databases why it is so popular today because it offers high performance it offers replication of the data it offers persistence and it offers a unique data model like if you compare it with other nosql database let's say there is mongodb there is cassandra there is couchdb so mongodb let's say for instance it supports the persisting of data in a document format like in a json format right but it already supports multiple data structure so it provides the capability to use multiple data structure as convenient to the application so redis basically stores data in key value formats it is very similar to memcache db which also stores values in key value format but the main restrictions with memcache is that they only use make use of blob as a data type so whenever you want to retrieve something from memcache you actually have to serialize it into a certain data structure which you want to display into the ui or somewhere so redis actually you know, provides various data such as supports as you can see the value of data can be strings can be hashes can be a list can be a set can be a sorted set even and there are multiple data structure as well which is supported such as uh, bitmaps streams hyperlock logs and geospatial indexes this is how redis provides a wide variety of data structure to be used in your application as we know in modern applications like in today's world all the modern applications or all the applications are becoming data centric right so they are making use of data to reach to the larger audience and all those uh, stuff and in that scenario redis is basically suited for these modern applications because it is very high performant and it can make use of those data and it can handle those data more efficiently and there are major popular uh, applications today if we interact socially with are uh, actually making use of redis in their application architecture and we will see what are those applications uh, but first let's see what are the capabilities of redis so redis since it's high performance it can be used for high speed transactions the most important use case of redis uh, actually is uh, caching so uh, you will see uh, whenever you will discuss your application architecture with your product team or with your uh, technical architect you must encounter this word term redis when it comes to a technical uh, decision on caching mechanism right so it can be used as messaging so it can be used as message broker it can be used in pub sub model which is twitter making use of it it can be used as uh, in part as part of machine learning it can be used for searching uh, techniques it can be used in analytics it can be used in rate limiting as well so our focus today will be on uh, caching and uh, we will actually make use of a spring boot application and we will see how Redis can be used as a caching mechanism in Spring Boot application and how the data can be actually stored in cache and uh, we can reduce the network call to database. One of the major application with which we interact daily uh, socially is making use of Redis and uh, that is Twitter. And Twitter actually makes use of Redis in the timeline services. Let's say you follow a person A and that person A is being followed by let's say 10,000 other uh, people on Twitter. So whenever that person A tweets something, that tweets get persisted into Twitter's data source and at the same time that tweet should fan out to all those 10,000 followers timeline as well. Okay, so this fanning out process, this tweet fanning out process in a real near real time uh, to do this actually Twitter makes use of Redis. Okay. So they make use of PubSub model basically to publish something and subscribe uh, to all the places where it, it needs to be displayed. So this is how Twitter makes use of Redis. Then Snapchat uses Redis, then Pinterest uses Redis and one of the most major application which I think me and you all interact daily with is uh, Stack Overflow. They use Redis and GitHub uses Redis. 
So these are some of the applications which makes use of Redis somewhere in their application architecture. Let's now move ahead and uh, see how we can actually configure Redis in our Spring Boot application and we can make use of Redis too. Let us now see how we can actually configure Redis uh, in our Spring Boot applications and we can cache some of the API's transaction. For that, first we have to go to redis.io and we have to download the stable version. So I'll click on Redis stable version to download it. And meanwhile, it's getting downloaded. So we have this interactive tutorial shell, right? Where actually we can go ahead and we can learn some basic commands of Redis to give an overview. Let's say I am setting a name with uh, my name, and here the key is this name. And if I uh, do it as let's get name, then it will return me back the name. So these are the some of the basic commands which you can learn through this interactive shell, and it's uh, highly advisable to go through that once because we'll not cover those commands in this particular video. So let's jump back to the downloaded version of Redis and I'll go open it. Let me extract it first. Okay, so I have extracted it. Uh, let me open the terminal at this particular position. Yeah, so the first thing which we have to do after extracting the Redis zip file is we have to run the make command so what this make command will do it will compile all those binaries inside uh, uh, the redis uh, folder which you just downloaded and once it is compiled we will be able to start the redis server and redis cli okay so now it is uh, compiled and what i'll do i'll just clear the screen out so what i will do is uh, i'll uh, see if you do ls you will see there's a folder name as src so all the all your redis server and redis cli command lies inside that so what i'll do i'll do src slash redis hyphen server okay and this has actually started my redis server which is uh, running in port number 6379 by default and it's running in localhost in standalone mode okay so what i'll do as well is i'll create one more tab and uh, i will open the cli so for that we have to type src slash redis hyphen cli so once it is open once your server is up and running so this command will actually connect to that server it is server and it will give you this clear uh, shell wherein you can write those redis commands so to give an example let's say i will set name and i'll type uh, let's say stack or text okay so this returns okay and i can actually get the name and it will return the value so what we have to do now is we have to create a spring application so i'll go to start.spring.io and i will add a dependency first dependency is web okay then i am making use of mysql in my uh, application so i'll be adding jp as well okay and then i'll be adding mysql driver as well and the most important part is redis so once you type redis we will be seeing two things one is spring data reactive redis and one is spring data redis so we will be making use of no sql spring data redis access plus driver so let me just add it so once all these things are added you can name anything to your application let me just give the name as redis and i'll generate it yes so okay. i have actually uh, imported one application and i have created some basic stuff so if you see here i have created a user controller which is basically uh, get one user then create a user then get all user update a user and delete a particular user similarly i have created a user domain which will be persisted in mysql database and these are the service impl which is actually doing all the business logic of saving retrieving updating and deleting a user record okay so this is the basic stuff i will provide the link of this particular application in my github repo so no need to worry so, so the most important thing is in pom.xml so here. if you so this uh, spring boot starter data redis so this is the dependency which will allow our application to enable redis caching mechanism okay so make sure when you download your uh, application from starter spring.io and cross check your pom.xml that you should have this particular dependency in here okay so let's jump back to the controller so right now all the controller apis all the rest endpoints are basically a normal rest endpoints which will go to a database and fetch uh, the details so to be able to distinguish whether the api request is making a call to database or it is actually retrieving the data from redis cache i have actually included one logger which will log uh, the messages whenever a request comes into this particular controller method and if that particular api request uh, has been cached then it will not go inside this particular uh, method and hence nothing will be locked so let me first uh, start this application 
okay so now the application is started i'll go back to postman and uh, i'll try to retrieve some of the users which is already persisted in the database so if i hit this api slash users it will give me the list of users which i have already created and it is already available as part of uh, this particular table okay i created some 10 dummy users so that is why uh, i'm getting all these 10 records here so what i'll do i'll go ahead and look into this redis client okay so whenever uh, you want to see whether any key is existing in redis server you just have to type keys and then star so it will list out all the keys which has been created so right now we have created this set name okay so that's why the name is uh, present here so if you want to clear out these keys from your redis server you just have to do flush all okay and it will return okay so it's not case sensitive you can do plus all in small case as well if you do keys and then star you will say that it's an empty array so right now nothing is cached in redis server okay and um, let me just go ahead and uh, retrieve uh, let's say the fourth record okay and i am getting this fourth record if i go to IntelliJ and if i see the logs you can see that uh, this was the first call which we made uh, by getting all the users and this is the call which we just right now made which will retrie which retrieved us uh, with the user of id 4 okay now let me go ahead and again hit this particular endpoint again i am getting the same response and if we see the logs again it has made a call to database okay so twice it has made a call to database so, so if you want if we configure redis in our application and we want to actually cache certain amount of id so whenever let's say for example whenever we fire a request to get the user whose id is greater than 4 okay then all those ids which are greater than 4 like 5 6 7 8 9 all of those will be cached so the first time it will be retrieved from database and henceforward if any request comes in with the same id it will just go ahead and retrieve from cache it will not make a database call so how can we achieve that so right now nothing is configured in this application which is related to caching so the first thing which we have to do is we have to go to our main application class that is uh, where we find the spring boot application annotation and we, and we have to add add enable caching okay so this will let spring know that this application uh, that in this application caching is enabled okay so let me go ahead into the controller uh, and so this was the api which we were uh, making use of to retrieve uh, the user details of a particular id so what to cache a particular request on the basis of some condition we have to add one annotation which will be at cacheable okay so you can see this is coming from spring framework dot cache dot annotation at cacheable so i'll click that and this will take some value some uh, parameters so we want to give the value okay so you want to give the name of the key which will be created once the value will be cached so let me just give the name as users so right now what we'll have to provide that we have to cache a particular record but on the basis of what that record can have multiple fields it can have id it can have name it can have email ids and well so since our uh, records will have a unique id so we'll be caching on the basis of id okay as we are retrieving on the basis of id only so what i'll do i'll add key and then you have to give hash and then id so whatever parameter you are passing into this request on the basis of that parameter it should be cached okay so right now if we leave up to this it will cache everything okay so any request which is coming in for the first time it will cache everything into the um, redis cache so let me just restart this uh, server it has started so i'll go ahead and i'll make a call to uh, let's say third record this time so this will take some longer time because it is retrieving the first time from the database right so i have got this record and if i see the logs yes. we can see that it has made a request to database to fetch the details okay let me go ahead uh, to the cli and uh, let me just search for uh, keys if any keys has been created or not so as you can see it has created a key which says users colon colon three so users is the name which we have gave while configuring add cacheable and three is the id so if you do get users colon colon three you will get something like this 
and you can see that it is having the details about that user 3 so this is the email of the user this is the contact number and uh, somewhere would be the name basically okay so now let us go back to the application and uh, since we have not provided any condition right so let me just provide one condition and uh, with the keyword unless you can provide one condition so what you can do is you can write hash and then write the result which will be having the result of that particular record which we just retrieving so if result dot id is less than three which means if the result if whatever the result we are retrieving from database if the id of that result is having less than three then it will not be cached okay if the id is greater than three then only it will be cached so let's say instead of three i'll make it as five okay and uh, I will restart the application. Okay, the application has been started and let me just go back to the CLI and let me clear all the keys. Okay, so I have cleared all the keys and uh, what I'll do, I'll go ahead in the postman and I will invoke let's say second ID okay so it is giving me back the details of second ID and if we see it has actually made a database call so since we have applied some condition that results should be greater than 5 and we will invoke again the second key of the ID so if we see here if we do keys and uh, star it has an empty array and if we go to the application we can see that it has again make the call to the user so basically twice it has made the call so since it is not being cached so now let's say i'll go to the post and i'll create let's say the sixth id and since it is meeting the condition of id should be greater than five then the first time it should invoke it should get it from the database and the second time it should get from the cache so if i do keys star we have this user six and if I again go ahead and run this, it will not be calling getting from database. It is actually getting from cache because we have only one call which was the previous call. Okay, now let me go ahead and actually invoke one uh, update element. Okay, so let me just grab let's say the tenth one. Okay, and um, I will update it. So I'll go ahead and put it into the body. Okay, and I will make the user 10 as uh, user 12. Okay, so I am updating the details of user 12. Okay, so if I hit it, it says that ID 10 and the update value is user 12. If I go to the database and if I retrieve, so as you can see, the 10th ID is user 12 now. So basically, when I will be fetching this particular ID, it should get me. Oh, sorry. Uh, the tenth one right so the tenth one it should actually uh, get me the user 12 okay so i have got user 12 it is actually sorry it is actually making a call to user 10 and it is uh, retrieving the details and in cache as well it will be adding that value user 10 is there now let me go ahead and update the user 10 once again so at this time what i'll do i'll make it as user 13 okay and uh, i'll do and update okay so i have updated user 13 so if i do get all user we can see the 10th id is having user 13 not the user 12 now i'll go ahead and i'll retrieve the user 10 so if i retrieve user 10 as you can see you can observe multiple times if i uh, invoke it will only always give me user 12 because this was cached earlier and until and unless we remove this from cache will not be able to get the latest uh, updated uh, record but this is not the recommended way so what should happen ideally is whenever we update a record that should also get updated into the cache if that record is was already cached so to avoid data inconsistency what we can do is we can update this um, particular uh, api update api with at cache put so what this will do is this we have to in this we have to provide the value which will be the key which is actually getting stored into the cache and then we have to provide uh, the key 
uh, with which we want to actually search the cache that is hash id and that's it so whenever a request for a particular id or a particular user with this id will get updated it will also update the key which is already saved in uh, redis so here since we are uh, getting the user as a request body so what we'll do is we'll do user dot id okay and uh, if we rerun the application so now the application has been started let's go back to postman and uh, let me update this time the eighth id okay so i will update user 8 and user 8 to something as 8 hyphen 1 okay 8 hyphen 1 okay but before that let me get that user so that it will be stored in the cache so i will retrieve this 8th id and uh, this should get populated in here so we have this user 8 in here and uh, what i'll do i'll again invoke this so i'll get user 8 all the time so i'll update this to user 8 hyphen 1 so let me update this so i have updated it to user 8 hyphen 1 and uh, let me go back to the cli and let me see if users colon colon 8 what the value is surprisingly this is having user 8 hyphen 1 at the gmail.com which means when we updated that record it actually updated the cache as well so if i do 8 now initially it was having user 8 and this was cached in redis but when we invoke um, update api it actually updated the record in db as well as in the redis cache so now if i invoke this it will return me the new value yeah so it is returning me the new value so this is how we can use add cache put uh, annotation to actually update a record whenever it gets updated into the redis cache as well okay the next thing is basically to delete a record whenever that record is not existing so so assume that scenario wherein uh, you are actually uh, deleting a record but that particular record is already cached into the redis so whenever you will make a get call to that record again it will actually go ahead and give it from your cache and you don't want that particular situation wherein the user record is not existing in db but you are getting it from the cache so to avoid that particular situation what we have we have this cache evict option and in this particular option you can actually provide uh, that what happens when a record is deleted so basically what you have to do is you have to add a value so this value will be user so this is the key which is getting stored into the cache and then all entries no we don't want to delete all the entries we just want to delete the entry from the disk which is being deleted from database so for that purpose we have to add a key okay so key will be hash id so whenever a request for deleting this particular user id comes into the controller so that that particular id if it is present in uh, the redis cache that will also get deleted okay so we just restart the server yeah so the server is uh, started now and uh, i'll go back to the postman and i'll invoke a delete command so let me i let me see since uh, if i so 8 is already present in redis cache right so i want to delete the 8th record let me record it let me delete it so it is now deleted so if i do a get of 8 it should throw me an error 500 internal server error because it is not present and if i go to this particular cli if i do keys and star as you can see the user 8 is not present so it has deleted from redis cache as well and it has deleted from the db as well because okay so this is how we can actually make use of redis as a caching mechanism in a spring boot application this is it i'll provide the application link in the description box and you can go ahead and download it from the github and uh, you can follow along so that's it